Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you at least four common problems I notice when people use pop-ups to create their mobile menu and why I think you should avoid using pop-ups for your menu in general. Now I know a lot of content creators and users like to use pop-ups, but those things are not good for your websites and they are bad both for SEO as well as for accessibility. And we'll be looking at it right now. So if you are interested, stick around and we'll jump right into it. So here we have a demo set that I created based off of one of Imran's templates and it basically has the header section and the main content area. Within the header section, we have the site logo, the hamburger icon that triggers the pop-up menu. So this is a typical example of how the mobile menu works with so many of our Elementor websites. In fact, Elementor themselves used to advertise this as a way to create mobile menus but there are so many flaws with it and thankfully they've come up with a slightly better solution so now let's go ahead and see some of the issues that are happening when you use the pop-up menu with elemental websites so let me go over to a private window so here we are on the private window i opened the private window so that it doesn't have any interaction with the admin bar or any other thing that will obstruct it so the things we're looking at now is related to the HTML structure. I want to see if it has the proper landmark regions, it has proper names and roles, and that it is well structured so the related contents are structured together. So now let's see. I'll right click in the header section and we'll straight away see the problem. So let me first explain. Within a typical page, the way a page should be structured is we start with the HTML, which is the HTML, followed by the body. Then after that, we'll typically have like skip links if necessary. Then we'll have the main landmark structures. So there are a couple of landmark regions that are used to identify a page to quickly navigate between the page, especially for search engines and for assistive technologies. So the way it is supposed to be structured is we start with the header section then if the page is a long enough page then we have the navigation landmark then we followed by the main content area where we have all our important information the next thing is the footer which is the content info landmark and then we can have some other ones like the aside which is basically what we have in like our sidebar which is like content that are related to the main content area but not really within the main content so things like let's say you have an article and your related posts those related posts are just slightly related to the main content but they're not part of the main content things like your adverts as well they are not part of your main content so they should be put in an aside so those are the kind of things that are not directly related to your main content but still exist on the page so you can see here we have a div instead of a header landmark then we also have a div here but it has a main tag within the div i had to do it this way because i found some issues with elementor so generally elementor theme builder breaks accessibility so that's why i remember is it jen harris or someone mentioned that she doesn't like using elementor pro anymore because elementor pro's theme builder instead of helping you to enhance accessibility, generally breaks accessibility. So let's see how we can fix this problem with the header tag. And it's not just my website. I've also mentioned it to Imran a couple of times, but he doesn't seem to get what I mean. If you inspect his demo page, you will notice that it also does not have a header region. So it only has the main and the, in fact, doesn't even have a footer region. So it just has the class or a data attribute equal to footer but it doesn't actually have the proper landmark name called footer or header so those things will fail in an accessibility test so now let's go back and see how we can easily fix this so let me go back to the edit page so this is the elemental edit page i'll go to the header template now that i'm in the header template we'll now go to the header settings 
if you have the top bar experiment, it's at the top, see header settings. If it's not active, then it should be somewhere at the bottom left of your page. Let me click on it. it takes me to the header settings. Then just change the header HTML tag from div to a header. Then publish it. So now that I've done that, if we go back down to the page, refresh, we now see that the header landmark is there. So the first thing checked for the landmark. Next, we now see if the navigation landmark is also there. So now let me go to the header, go through all the wrapper divs. The second thing, there is no landmark region here. It is not available here. The nav it does not show here because it's in a pop-up. And that's where the problem happens. The pop-up is somewhere way at the bottom of this page and it does not even display correctly. So let me show you what I mean. Let me close this. Then use an automated test of using these accessibility insights. I'll click on landmarks to see all the available landmarks on the page. And as you can see right now, we have just the banner landmark, the main landmark, which is the main content area, and the content info landmark, which is the footer. We don't have any navigation on this page. So assistive technologies and search engines will think there is no navigation on your page. So that's what it just means. Although since I used a nav, there is actually a nav on this page, but it just isn't there visually or in the code. So let me show you what I mean. Let me remove this. Now I will open the navigation and then I will try again. And now you see, it shows that there's a navigation. And this is a problem. Like was mentioned way back in 2016 in a tweet, I will show you now. It was mentioned that your menu button should be placed within your nav so it's still reachable by landmark navigation. So this is how the ideal structure should be. You should have your nav followed by your button that triggers the mobile menu, then followed by the mobile menu in a list. So the nav itself should not be hidden. So that's where the problem happens with a lot of us. If you're using the WordPress menu inside the pop-up, that means the WordPress menu is being hidden inside the pop-up. Ideally, the button that triggers the pop-up should be inside of a nav. So I'll show you how we can fix it temporarily, but it's not a complete fix, but I'll show you. So definitely there should be a nav. Then if your desktop menu or mobile menu are different, then it should be the desktop menu at the top, followed by the button, then followed by the mobile menu. And that's how the flow should be because the HTML flow should follow so that in case for whatever reason, there is JavaScript issues, the content itself should still flow well. So like you see, the problem, like I showed here, the nav is there, but it's hidden. So it should not be hidden. And here comes the next problem. The next problem is that the actual content, this is even the deal breaker. But before that, let me show you the next thing you need to check is you should check the role and name. So everything on your page, especially focusable elements, should have the proper name and role. Now let's go over back to the header, inspect, and we'll be using this accessibility tree to help us to get the names and the roles. So now you see the first thing we have there is the skip content. So skip to content because this is how like screen readers and other assistive technologies work with your page. They don't, we cannot see it visually. So they rely on this accessibility tree that is exposed to them. So we have the skip to content that is has the name is skip to content and the role is a, is a link. The next thing, there is the banner, which is the header. It doesn't have a name, but this is only one header per page. So it doesn't need to have a name. Same with the main content area. They don't need to have names because they are only one on the page. If you have multiple, then you must give them a name. But if it's just going to be only one on the page, then there is no need to have a name. That's one thing you should remember. And as you can see, this is the site logo. And you see the name that I gave it here. The name is called Divden Home. So rather than describing how 
the images or leaving it blank, you should give a name that describes the role of the site logo. So rather than just give your name site logo, you should give it what is the function. So the function is that it is taking you to the home page. So that's why I put the then home and then the role is that it's a link. So the way it is read by screen readers is that you say they've then home link. So it reads the name followed by the role. And this is where, let me show you one website that has a problem. The code snippers website, if you inspect it and go and try to find the name, you see it has the banner landmark. So they did it well. But now watch what happens. This is the link, but it just says link. It has no name. So a screen reader user will have no idea what that link does. It just knows that it's a link. And the way it is that a name must be called, so it will start reading out the URL rather than reading out the accessible name. So in this case, the accessible name should be something like maybe code snippets home or something like that. So something that describes the function of the link. And the way we add that accessible name is in one of two ways when it comes to images. You can either add it as an alt text on the image itself or using an area label. So any of those two will work. Let's say they come to the element. Right click, inspect again. Let me switch off accessibility. So all you have had to do, see they, they left the alt text blank. You just say alt equal to something like code snippets home or home page and then now when you go back to the accessibility tree now you see that the link has a name which is called code snippets home page link so that will now give us an idea of, okay yes it is the code snippets home page that we are going to when we click on this link so next let me come back now let's go to the button itself and see the next problem see now this is the button it is saying the role is a link, which is not right, and it has no name as well. So when a screen reader user or any other assistive technology gets onto your button, even search engines as well, because they also read all of these things, so the search engine will come over to your button and then just sees the button. The button has no function. It doesn't know what the purpose of the button is. So how is that good for anybody? Ideally, the button should also have a name. So that's where the mistake always happens, and the purpose of this thing is to perform an action. It is opening the off canvas menu. It is not like linking to a page or to an anchor on your page. So the role should be a button and it should have an accessible name, which in this case should be like maybe menu toggle or something like that. Something that helps to describe what is the function of the button. How can we solve this problem? We'll go back to our page and then Click on the button. So for the image itself, there are two ways you can sort out that image. Like I said, you can either go ahead and edit the image in your media library and give it that accessible name. Or if you want to add an area label, you can now come to where the link is. Click on the link option and simply write area dash label with the pipe symbol and say Dave then home page. And this will now be the accessible name for the link. So those are the two ways you can do it. Either add the alt text on the image that describes the function of the link or add an area label that describes the function of the link. Any of the two will work. So let me save that. Now for the button itself, the same thing we have to do. Go to content. Where the link is, is a pop-up. Click on the link options. Come to the this place first like i said it is not a link it should be a button so ideally we should be using the button tags not even an a tag but we can't do that in this case so we do the next best thing which is to use an avia attribute so we say role equal to and we can't use equal to here so we use the pipe symbol button that will convert to equal to sign on the front end then in comma we will now say avia label equal to mobile or just menu toggle because this is both 
on mobile and on desktop. So just a menu toggle. Although ideally you should have a desktop menu. This hamburger, there are like maybe probably 40% of people will not click on that hamburger to see your menu. So you will be losing a lot of customers getting to your links. So where you have a wide estate, please put visible navigation. So only when you have like a narrow estate, like your mobile menu, then you can put a hamburger sign, then people know that they click on the hamburger. But yeah, anyway, that's it. So now we can publish it. And then we'll go back. Let's now refresh it. And you now notice that now it says that there's something wrong. We go back and see. Oh, I used an equal to sign, sort of a pipe symbol. So pipe. Publish it again. And go back. That's why you should always go to test. So now let me refresh. So now you see, it says menu toggle. It always call out name followed by role. So that's why ideally, whenever you are naming things, don't add the role into the name because it will now become a double announcement to a screen reader user. So if you have navigation, don't say primary navigation. You can say primary menu or primary, but don't write the role or the landmark within the name. So in this case, you can ask it, you should now read out to a screen reader, menu toggle button. And then it will read out so many other things that are related to the button, like if it's active or if it's selected and things like that. But basically, it just read out menu toggle button. So now the role and name have been fixed, but now here comes the breaking factor which is the reason why I would not advise anybody to use a pop-up. And that is that the content itself does not even exist on the page. So what do I mean? Let me go back to the normal tree. Now let's see. If I open the toggle and then try to find where this link is. You see it is at the bottom of the page. So the link is located Basically, after all of this, so this is where it should be within the header, but this is where it actually is. It is the last element on the page. And that is a problem. It's no longer following the proper structure of an HTML page. Like I said from the beginning, it should be within a landmark region. And now it's no longer within any landmark region and it's not even within the header or within the nav. It is somewhere at the bottom of the page. So that's why there's a problem and added to this problem is that the moment I close the pop-up, it is actually removed from the page using JavaScript so that it doesn't even exist on the page. So that's why for SEO purposes, this is just bad. It's just very bad. It does not exist on the page because it is literally added using JavaScript and removed using JavaScript when it is opened or closed. So this is meant for pop-ups. It's not meant for actual usable content that is related to the page. So don't use pop-ups for your content at all. So I know some people will tell you to add in an extra menu here and then hide it, but it still leads to a similar problem because like I showed you from that tweet, the nav itself should not be hidden. So when you do that, the nav is still hidden and then it still leads to the same problem. Now, how can we fix the problem? Thankfully, in 3.22 of Elementor, they've come up with a solution using a different widget. And that's what I'm going to be showing you now. So let's close this. Now go back to the widget. And this time, rather than using this pop-up, I'm going to use something different. So now, how we solve the first problem, which happens with the navigation. I'll add in a container. This container now will house the icon and I will also add in the new widget which is called the off canvas widget. So those two widgets. And then the next thing I'll do now is change the role of this container because we don't want the nav itself to be hidden. We want the UL within the nav to be hidden. So I'll now change the role of this container Go to the advanced options, change the HTML tag to nav. So now we have 
the container that is acting as the nav. The next thing I'll do now is within the off canvas widget itself, I'll now drop in this is important an icon list widget. So I'm not using a WordPress navigation widget because you cannot have a nav within a nav. It starts to create noise for assistive technologies. Do not nest a nav within a nav, basically. So rather than using the WordPress menu, so that's where the feature request that I will hope Elementor implements is that they should give us the option to change that nav tag from our WordPress menu and our menu widget from a nav to a div. In the event I want to use it an off canvas menu, then we don't need to have a nav again. So we want that one to be a div. So I wish Elementor will be able to allow us to change the tag from a nav to a div and to even remove the area label and things like that. So basically I need Elementor to give us more control over their widgets. There's too much closed case that creates problems for everybody. That's one problem I have with Elementor basically that they're trying to be as simple as possible, but then that leads to a problem because you should do like Matt said a long time ago, I think he mentioned that he wants WordPress to be as simple as possible for anybody to use, but still complex enough to do any complex tasks. So Elementor should give us some defaults, but then allow us to be able to overwrite it. But for now, let me just show you what the ideal case should be. Now with this one, I'll go ahead and start adding in the menu widget. So I'll say home here. Then let me remove the icon. Then we'll have some other links. So let me just say something like contact. The latest icon should be a link. So it will be linked to an actual page. Then let me say maybe blog. And that should be a link as well to an actual page, but I'm just using the hash symbol for now. Then I'll copy this or let me duplicate it. This will be the desktop menu. This will be the primary navigation, the desktop menu the mobile menu toggle then this is the off canvas that will now show up so that is basically our mobile menu basically all of this is the mobile menu so let me close this now save it for the desktop menu usually it to be straight so let me use the inline say publish that now I'll go back to the toggle. Instead of toggling a pop-up now, close this pop-up. And now we want it to toggle the off canvas. So off canvas, click on the bench icon. So it should toggle the off canvas and it should be the off canvas one. That's the first one we created on the page. Publish it. Now let me go to the off canvas and turn it off. So now we have all of these. Let me make the widget to be in a row then I'll say end centered advanced tab remove the padding and yeah that's it so let me publish it now the next thing we want to do is so we show the desktop menu on the desktop the mobile menu on mobile so desktop menu advanced tab go to responsive settings and I want it to only show up on the desktop, so hide it on other screen sizes. Then the mobile menu toggle, advanced tab, responsive. I want to only show it on the two of them, so hide it on desktop. And the other one will generally be hidden, so I can leave that alone. Publish this. And now let's go back to the page, refresh and see how everything is working properly. Yeah, one thing I forgot is to name the navigation because usually we'll have multiple navigation on the page. You might have like breadcrumbs or like table of contents. Some people like to put those in a nav. I don't, sometimes I do not do that, but like your breadcrumbs might be in a nav. Some people also put some menu in the footer. So because there might be multiple menus on the page, 
just make sure that the primary navigation you give it a name of maybe primary so I'll come to this container that is the navigation so now you see additional tags it is giving navigation then i'll go to the advanced tab i'll go over to attributes this only works with elementor pro then i'll see aria label pipe symbol primary so that means this is the primary navigation because like i said it will read out the name followed by the role so say in the primary navigation let me publish this and now we can see the effects on the front end so i'll use that accessibility tester check the landmarks and you see it has the primary navigation it has the main landmark it has that banner landmark and then it has the content info landmark so everything you can see there's a line out across everything there is nothing that is outside of these lines that's what it means that everything must be enclosed within landmarks that is one of the rules let me now toggle it off then we'll check out the accessible names so let me right click inspect go to the the tree sign and now you see we have the skip links skip to content then followed by the banner because like i said we only have one banner so we don't need to give it a name and then we have the link which is for our logo it has a name we have the navigation it has a name as well within the navigation we have this list and those are the list items so when a screen reader user is navigating using landmarks you will be able to navigate to your navigation landmark and then when it gets there if it's on desktop you will see the desktop menu if it's on mobile you will see a link that should now allow him to trigger it but because it's hidden on desktop that's why it's not showing even in the accessibility tree when it goes over to mobile you see now the button is there for the mobile the navigation is there so he knows that it's on a navigation landmark and that there's a button so and the button tells you that it will open and that's where you see it shows that it's opening the off canvas which is nice to see but i wish elementor would allow us to change the name of this um role because it automatically gives you the name of off canvas we as the users we should have the option to give it a name like maybe mobile menu like if it's triggering maybe a side cut or something like that we should be able to name it according to our own purpose it should not be hard coded for us but at least it's better than nothing so now we have that mobile menu when it's opened then it opens the dialog which is the off canvas that has the list and those are the list items so if you want to use your mobile menu this is how ideally it should work but with this way you can't have drop downs and that's the problem so the best thing is for elementor to give us that option to be able to change from a nav to a div then we can use this workaround and we'll get our perfect nav that will be good for seo and good for accessibility as well so if this video has helped you please do leave a like share the video write in the comments that the video helped you if you have a better method like maybe you have a different menu that you think is accessible then write it in the comments it might help somebody else so until next time enjoy bye